purpose. The purpose of this test is to determine the particle size distribution of fine and coarse aggregates by dry sieving. But this time around, we are not provided the sieves themselves or the shaker to separate the aggregates. So we have to use a different method of sieving using certain materials that we can use to get the same or close to the same results as if we were using the sieves themselves. Significance and use. This test is used to determine the grading and materials that are to be used as aggregates. It ensures that the particle size distribution complies with applicable requirements and provides the data necessary to control the material of various aggregates, products, and mixtures containing aggregates. The data may also be useful in developing relationships concerning porosity and packing. Apparatus. Two of the main apparatuses for this type of test would be the sieves themselves and the shaker. But since we don't have them on hand, as of right now, we have to improvise to get similar results if we were to use the items we had on hand, such as a plastic crate, power drill, drill bits, duct tape, cardboard, cardboard box, metal wiring, staples, screws, a scale, a spoon, dry sample, a pan, and old-fashioned brute strength to shake the plastic crate. Test specimen. For the sample that we will test would be just the standard South Texas black dirt with a little bit of possible creek embedment, since where we are getting our sample is from where they say a creek used to run, that we dug out of a dirt patch to to test to see if it can be suitable to use for any future developments. For the drill bits themselves, we have them ranging from 1 4th of an inch all the way to 5 64th of an inch, with converts, which converts to 1.98 millimeters. So our test will go from, from 1 4th of an inch sieve to equivalent of a number 10 C, which is more than enough to test for the fine aggregate. Coarse aggregate will be a little more tough to sample since we don't have the sample of that equivalent, but we can just do the fine aggregate to get more accurate readings since fine aggregate is the building block for most every building project. The procedure for this project is you have to collect the sample from a dirt bit that is provided and weight the sample with the scale that is provided at the laboratory. Once you have the sample measured, grab a cubic plastic crate within a length of 12 and a half inches and a width of 13 and a half inches and a height of 21 inches. Draw one inch square at the bottom of the crate to separate the different testing holes we are going to use. Drill holes at the bottom of the crate within one inch square with the given drill, ranging from one fourth of an inch and five over 64 of an inches. Once the holes are driven into the craft, attach the metal wiring at the bottom of the craft as well as a cardboard square and stable them so the holes can match each other. After attaching the wire, we attach the cardboard box with a duct tape with the measurement of 10.5 inches for the length, 11 and 5 over 8 inches for the width, and for the height is 2 inches. Inside the cardboard box, we need 1 inch spacers to separate the sample from the 1 fourth all the way to 5 over 64 of an inch to get an accurate reading for the sample. Use the wooden screwers to hold up the different size of walls to separate the samples. With both hands, check the craft in an upward and downward motion for 10 minutes so the samples can be best distributed. Take off the box at the bottom and use the spoon to scoop the sample and then measure the weight of each sample. Record the data and compare the test from the original test design and see if there are any similarities to our original. My name is Paul Fullen, and today I'm going to attempt to do the sieve analysis test but without using either the sieves and the shaker. So basically what we have, we, what we did is we rigged up uh, apparatus in order to get the fine results that we need. We're still going to use the charts, we're still going to use everything else that are given in the, the given a ASTM chart but we're just gonna do it a little differently since we have to find a different way to do it. So if you look over here, we have our sample of the dirt that we're gonna be testing. It's a little bit of the South Texas soil mixed with some creek embedment because they say back then a creek used to run along, run along where we're standing right now. So that's kind of good to see what we can get from that. So let's go, let's go weigh our pans and we will come back to that real quick. 
so what we're gonna do now is that we just have a standard pan that we would use in the field to see if we can get the sample. So what we'll do is we'll measure it, and then once we have it measured, we'll have our estimate. So it weighs around 5.5 ounces, so round out about to 0 0.344 pounds, and that's the pan itself. So we can have it, so we can subtract the dirt from the pan that get the dirt's weight. So if we go over here, let's get our sample. sure it's packed in. Just double check the packing. And then what we'll do is we'll weigh it. And it weighs around about 3.11 pounds. So that's with that's with both soil and pan. And then we will do our calculations whenever we're figuring out the rest of the stuff. But so we can start the sieve, sieve analysis test, we'll take this off. So what I have here is what we rigged up is that we just got a plain crate as it is. We had the hole already pre-cut and then we had duct tape on here to seal it shut. And so, and if you're figuring out like, well, how are you going to sieve it through? Well, we drilled holes through here in between. And the reason why we have a cardboard box here is because in between, in between, I'm not sure if you can see it, but we have a piece of uh, wiring under here so we can break it up even more. So it won't just go straight down into the into just the sample. The way we're gonna the way we're gonna distribute the sample is that we rigged up something to separate the sample as well. And on the side here, we have our numbers to tell you which one is it from. These numbers represent the sieves per se from if we were doing with the sieve test. So this is the one fourth sieve and it can go all the way down to around the 10th sieve. The uh, 564th of an inch is equivalent to the 10, the number 10 sieve. So we have, we have enough on here for being a number four sieve and a number eight, which is what we need to determine the fine aggregate. So once we're done with that, we're gonna attach this around here, make sure it's even with it, make sure it's kinda, equivalent to where we were at and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna duct tape around this and then once I get that done we'll come back to the testing part so now we duct taped it our our homemade sieve on there and so all we're gonna do now is pour our sample in here so as you can see it's already in there and then what, what we're gonna do is the standard procedure says you put it in a shaker for about 10 minutes and it's supposed to sieve it all the way through. But we don't have a shaker around here, so we're gonna have to just do some old fashioned shaking with our own hands. So we're gonna roughly about 10 minutes or so, and then hopefully we'll get an accurate test and then we'll, me we'll measure it, weigh it and all that stuff. So we'll see where it comes okay, from. So after we did the sieve, uh, it turned out pretty good. It became about half half of what we started with and if you come closer this is what we had left now if we were using the other like the original sieves this would have been broken up a lot more but only since we were working with our resources that were with us that's as best as we can get it with but if we had the entire sieves and the entire shaker it would have broke it up even way more and get a better reading but this is pretty good because this is just what was left over on the top because we just had it sitting up in here and there's still some excess in there. We'll probably put that as error analysis. So once we do that, we're done with the sample. Dust it out. And what we'll do, and this is this is what we got from our sieves. So it turned out pretty good, as far as I know, <laughs> until we do the calculations. And so what we'll do is now is I'm gonna use this spoon to try my best to scoop out most of the sample and then weigh it and I'm gonna do it with for every single one of these until I get an accurate measurement and then once I get done with that we'll do the calculations and hopefully it gets around to around the zero percent where we got from our original one if it's somewhere close if it's like 0 0.001 percent that's, that's as best as we're gonna get
What you are seeing right now is the results we gained from the completion of the Sevis analysis test. How we got these numbers is the same method you would be using for the standard ASTM method, which is to find the percent retained at each hole size is the same calculation if you were able to use the actual sieve, which is the weight retained over the total retained times 100. Also, you have to find the cumulative percent retained, and we use the same method as well to solve for it. To solve for the cumulative percent retained, all you have to do is add them one by one until either gets 100% or close to 100%. And thankfully for this method of the sieve analysis, it got exactly 100%. So that means that the method provided above can be used for the ASTM method. For the percent passing, all you have to do is subtract 100 from each cumulative percent retained. If it is zero at the end of the percent passing, then it is a well-fine aggregate to use for construction. But if you get 0.01% or 0.02, it is still passable according to the standard since it cannot pass 0.03%. The chart above was made to show the decreasing of the percent passing through each hole size or the sieve size while we were shaking the crate for 10 minutes straight. So in conclusion, we decided to do the sieve analysis test. We weren't too sure how we were going to approach this since we were going to attempt this without the two main apparatuses, which were the sieves themselves and the mechanical shaker. We had to sit down and think how we were going to approach this from a limited materials point of view. We were thinking at first we could have bought stuff to rig up something to be a simulator of what would have done if we were given the seeds and shakers. But then one of the group members, Paul, said, well, let's look at it in a scavengeristic type of way since we are limited to the materials we need. So he went to his house and found materials that can be used to rig up a sieve type apparatus, as we were explaining above. We were also thinking about, well, how how past engineers did the test without the seeds and shakers and it struck us. Gold miners have been doing it since the very first discovery of gold in 1849 in California by panning the soil and discovering gold by just shaking the pan at a good rhythm. We were going to with that kind of method but a little mix of engineering ingenuity since we already knew what we were supposed to work towards. So Paul rigged up the apparatus and tested it at home since the where the soil sample he got also came from a possible creek embedment which makes the test even more reasonable. After he did the test, we got the measurements and did the calculations, and we managed to get what we needed for this test, which is 100% is of passing through the new apparatus. So we can conclude that this new apparatus we managed to rig up with, with what we were provided around us can accurately work if, there, if the seize or shaker isn't available at the job site we are at. Yes, the seize and shaker gives more of an accurate reading of the aggregate, that we are testing but this apparatus can get the same measurements as the sieves if we were using the original ASTM.